Did you know that over 6 million passenger car accidents occur in the United States every year? But cars are getting safer every year. Can we stop each one of those 6 million accidents? Probably not. But there are some intriguing technologies that can help us better understand the cause of accidents and also help us address safety in assisted driving as well. Yes, my friends, it's time to talk about data logging and event data recorders in automotive applications. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Harsha Medu from Infineon and I examine the value of data logging in automotive applications. We explore the benefits of event data recorders and how these technologies will shape the future of automotive travel. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Harsha. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thank you for hosting me. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about data logging in automotive applications today. But Harsha, before we get started, what all will we be covering today? In this presentation, we will learn about the data logging memory typical memories used in a system. Then we will look at trends in automotive data logging, followed by overview of data logging applications in a car. We will take a specific application and understand the challenges of real-time data logging. Towards the end of presentation, we will learn about real-time data logger called Exelon Ephraim. Finally, we will end the presentation with other applications which can benefit from real-time data logging. Fantastic. So first, Harsha, what exactly is data logging memory? Data logging memory is a memory used to capture various data related to sensors, system variables in real time. Real time is the key. And typically, data is retained over a power cycle. The next question will be, how big is the memory? The size of the memory depends on the application requirements, like how much and how fast the data needs to be captured. One of the main features of data logging memory is read-write in a continuous fashion without degrading the performance over time. Most common data logging memories are non-volatile or battery-backed SRAM, since SRAMs are volatile in nature. And data logging memory finds usage everywhere from you know, consumer, industrial, and automotive. So let's step back a bit and talk about the different kinds of system memories. The data logging memory is not the only memory in a system. The system consists of boot or program memory, and these are the memories used for storing the code. These are one-time programmable memories, and the typical memories found here are NOR flash, the NAND flash, the NAND flash could be either EMMC or SSDs. Some use cases also have e square ROMs where the size of the code is small. The second type of memory found in a system are working or expansion RAMs. These are typically the volatile memories which is used to run the code. The typical memories here are the asynchronous SRAMs, synchronous SRAMs, DRAMs, low pin count hyper RAMs. Within the data logging memory, there are different memories based on the requirements. Typical memories here are NOR flash, asynchronous RAMs with battery backup, NAND flash, which again could be EMMC or SSD if there is a huge data logging requirements. And there are typical memories, speciality memories like FRAMs, NVSRAMs, MRAMs, which are true real-time data logging memories. Excellent. Now, Data analytics is at the heart of what we're talking about today, right? And we're seeing more and more applications depend on increased data analytics. That is right, Amelia. Automotive industry is going through major shift. Electrification, autonomous driving increase the number of sensors on the vehicle, which in turn generates lots of data. And as you know, data without analytics is meaningless. Cars are becoming your personal spaces. Infotainment is equipped with smartphone features, which again deals with lo loads of data. Another broad trend which is driving the automotive industry is AI machine learning. Increased electronics on vehicles have made it possible to design a data-driven approach to everything on car. 
And third big trend, what we are seeing in the automotive industry is safety and regulations. With autonomous driving, safety and regulations become very important. Regulations are being formed to track as much data as possible for accident reconstruction, safety improvements, and etc. Car manufacturers and insurance companies are also worried about the conflict between the driver and computer. The big question is who was in control of the vehicle at the time of accident. So these broad trends overall drive increased data logging in a car. That makes sense. Now, where would data logging be in automotive applications? Traditionally, data logging was found in engine control units, airbag modules, tire pressure monitoring systems. With EV and ADS trend, it is found everywhere from battery management systems, cameras, telematics, ADS, inverters, etc. Typical use cases of these data are data analytics, as we talked previously. So we also need to talk about event data recorders, right? Can we talk about those a bit as well? Event data recorders is a perfect example for data logging. It is real-time, stores critical data to analyze an accident. EDRs have existed for a long time. From early 2000s, it is commonly found in many, many cars. The main purpose of EDR is to monitor and log critical data like acceleration, vehicle speed, status of actuators like brakes, steering angle, etc. You know, another interesting fact is these EDRs are located mostly in airbag modules because they are safely uh, located to protect during an accident. And because these airbags and EDRs are critical components, they are backed up by huge capacitors against any power loss which may occur due to physical damage to main battery supply during an accident. This backup power is used to both deploy the airbags as well as store the data in non-volatile memory. EDRs can be found in vehicles all over the world. There are regulations governing the implementation of EDRs, like what kind of data must be logged, how frequently it must be logged, The U.S. was a pioneer in introducing these regulations back in 2006. Over a period of time, these have been adopted in Europe, Japan, South Korea, and China. Although U.S. never made it mandatory requirements, EDR adoption was so wide that today almost all vehicles are equipped with EDRs. Looking at the benefits, there are proposals to increase the amount of data stored during an accident. So, Harsha, are there regulations planned for event data recorders in self-driving cars? That's a good question. Self-driving cars pose a different challenge to lawmakers and insurance companies. At the time of accident, it is important to know who was in control of the vehicle. Is it the human driver or the autonomous computer? And as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Few images before a crash can reveal a lot in establishing the real cause of an accident. So new regulations are in development focusing on these aspects. SAE, which stands for Society of Automotive Engineers, came up with an extension to the traditional EDR requirements to cover the level 3 to level 5 vehicles. There is another effort by United Nations organization to regularize these across the world. DSSAD is one such proposal to fix the responsibility of vehicle control during an accident. So, Arsha, what are the biggest challenges you're seeing when it comes to EDRs? EDR design is challenging because it is used in extreme conditions like an accident. Traditionally, EDRs designs have used SRAM as the front-end buffer to collect the data and transfer to non-volatile memory during an accident. This is mainly because of the limitations of the non-volatile technologies existing at that time. As the regulations push for more data, the system would need larger SRAMs, larger non-volatile memory, longer time to complete the write, which means larger backup capacitors are needed. And large backup capacitors pose various problems like mechanical stability, larger package size, etc. So longer the write time, the risk of losing data increases as more data is in transition from the SRAM to non-volatile memory. So a lot of applications you mentioned depend on real-time continuous data logging, right? That's right. To overcome the problems of 
traditional design real time data logging or logging directly and continuously in a non volatile memory is critical this relies on instant non volatile and high endurance capability of the memory and this has many benefits it reduces the total time to data log which is very critical eliminates the large sram buffers required to hold the data temporarily this reduces the overall system cost it reduces the backup capacitor required to transfer the data after the event and this has two benefits one is lower size capacitors which increases the mechanical stability and also the overall cost of the system is reduced due to the smaller backup capacitors the biggest advantage is it eliminates the data loss in case of capacitor failure or insufficient charge and this is very critical in reconstructing the accident so what kind of solutions does infinian have for real time data logging Exelon Ephram is a real-time data logging memory offered by Infineon. Exelon Ephram offers many benefits over traditional memory. By the way, Ephram stands for ferroelectric RAM. It can write and read as fast as parallel interface SRAMs. The data is written at bus speeds, meaning as the data arrives on the input bus, it is written into the non-volatile memory without any delay. This instant non-volatility differentiates the FRAM technology from others. It is best in class reliability providing 100 trillion read write cycles in comparison to a million read write cycles of an eSquare PROM memory. High data retention is also a huge benefit in applications like EDR where the data may re- reside in the memory for a long time before the forensic team accesses it. it is also automotive and functional safety qualified which is another benefit of the exelon fram the technology itself makes it a low power and the frames can be mainly used in the low power applications which is again good for a lower you know backup capacitors whenever there is a need so harsha can you walk me through how this works so this diagram shows the main difference between fram and traditional memories like an a square prom Here in the diagram the data is written on a SPI bus or a serial bus and as the data arrives on the eSquare PROM device the device takes its own sweet time in few milliseconds to write the data into the non volatile now this time is critical because if a power is lost during this time the entire data written into eSquare PROM will be lost and hence a typical design with the eSquare PROM is accompanied with the backup capacitors and also another disadvantage of eSquare PROM would be writing multiple times into the same locations over and over and over because the technology itself degrades over time as more writes are done in a particular location with fram as the data arrives on the serial bus the data is non volatile and hence there is no extra time where the data is at risk and the backup capacitor is not required with the fram So how does FRAM compare with a more traditional implementation? This difference can be seen in a real application. Here we are talking about even data recorders again and there is something called pre-crash, crash and post-crash data. During an accident, the EDR captures and stores all three types of data. In the figure on the top, we can see an implementation with the traditional memory like data flash and eSquare PROM. Here the data before the crash which is called pre crash is captured in an SRAM buffer because we don't know whether the crash is going to happen or not the data needs to be captured continuously in the SRAM buffer so once the crash is detected and the data gets transferred from the SRAM into the non volatile memory because of the slower write times of these memories the data transfer takes a longer time to write into the non volatile memories and hence the backup capacitors required here is also huge in case of fram the pre crash data is directly written into the fram because the fram acts like an sram with non volatility so as the data is written into the fram if there is a crash detection the data need not be transferred to the non volatile memory because it's already logged in the fram if there is no crash the previous data is overwritten until a crash is detected so even once the crash is detected the post crash data is directly written into the fram 
making it a fast write time memory in comparison to the, the traditional memories. And as we looked at the advantages, the backup capacitors, backup power required is very low in FRAM with respect to the other memories. And this is a perfect example where the real-time data logging memory fits into these kind of applications. So what products does Infineon have in FRAM series? So based on OEM requirements or changes in regulations, the amount of data to be captured can vary. So at Infineon, we offer a range of products to satisfy different needs of customers. For example, the density or the memory size varies from as low as 4 kilobit to as high as you know, 16 megabit. And there are also various options on the memory interface like I2C, SPI, Quad SPI based on the interface speed requirements. And these go into various kind of applications, not just automotive, but also to industrial and medical where the requirements also are varies with respect to the low power, the IO voltage, the qualifications, etc. So how can we bring this type of real-time data logging to ADAS? So extending this concept to ADAS, we can see various use cases utilizing the real-time data logging. You know, the ADAS mainly consists of the cameras and the radar or leader. So the ADAS black box can store the extracted objects in an image, the locations of these objects, and the control signals given at a specific time. So with this information, we can reconstruct the accident scenario by looking at what are the objects seen by the computer, how did the car react by looking at the control signals, and then we can you know, correlate with respect to the time. Another example of real-time data logging would be last image storage. The raw images from the cameras can be directly logged into real-time memory in a continuous fashion. So when there is a crash, we will always have access to the last few images, which is probably very critical in analyzing the accident. The ADAS application also comes up with multiple cameras, and this real-time data logging can be used for sensor calibrations, like converting from 2D to 3D images, and the real-time data logging can be continuously used in that as well. So, Harsha, what do you think are the biggest benefits for data logging in automotive applications? The biggest benefits of data logging for automotive applications is data analytics. Having capability to store and analyze every cell of the battery in EV can increase the life of the battery. It can provide critical inputs for battery technology developments and system designs. These same benefits can also be seen in inverters and onboard charging. Excellent. Well, Harsha, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Amelia. It was a pleasure talking to you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.